Hello everyone, my name is Vijay Chitrapu and today I'll be walking you through a demo of 4CI Secure Desktops Administrator Capabilities and how to create your first Secure Desktops pool. So what is a pool? Essentially it's a collection of identical virtual desktops, all persistent. This means once a user is assigned to a desktop, they will always reconnect to the same one with all their files and applications in the same state as they left them. As a native OCI service, Secure Desktops seamlessly integrates with OCI console right under the Compute submenu. With the correct administrator permissions, you can easily create desktop pools in any designated compartment within your tenancy. Access for end users is controlled through policies tied to the compartment and IDCS group memberships. You can have multiple desktop pools within a single compartment sharing the same policy or alternatively you could distribute pools across different compartments based on requirements like desktop OS etc. When it comes to creating a pool there are several characteristics which you will define. First you will assign a name to the pool that will be visible to the end user in the client web UI. That's also a description but that's only visible to the admin. You can also schedule a start and stop time for the entire pool particularly useful for project related desktops. This way you can set up everything in advance plus you'll input administrator contact details so users can easily reach out if needed. Now here's something helpful. You can choose to provide users with administrator privileges on their desktops. This can be handy if they need to perform some admin tasks. Let's talk about pool size. This refers to the maximum number of desktops that can be provisioned in this pool. For instance, I'm setting this one up with 1000 desktops. You can also configure a certain number of desktops to always be ready for use, but not yet allocated. This service automatically provision this number to be on standby for future users. And next up is availability domains. You have the flexibility to select one based on your specific needs. Now, under the image and shape, you can pull custom desktop images from other compartments and even select different ones from where the desktop pool is hosted. There's also an option to use a dedicated virtual machine host. This lets you run OCI compute instances on dedicated servers, providing single tenant isolation, which is ideal for meeting strict compliance requirements. For the desktop shape, you can choose between either fixed or a flexible shape. Flexible shapes allow you to customize the number of OCPUs and memory, while fixed shapes offer predefined options. Under the desktop shape, select the required compute shape and under the desktop resource configuration, you have four options to choose from, high, medium, and low. Uh, fixed configurations of OCPUs and amount of memory. However, if you select the custom option, you can basically specify the number of OCPUs and memory required for the desktop pool. You can also enable burstable mode by choosing the baseline utilization per OCPU to enable cloud bursting capability on the desktop instance. For an instance with 64 OCPUs, the same 12.5% baseline means that 12.5% of the 64 CPU cores are available for baseline usage with a maximum burst of 100% of all CPU cores for cloud bursting capabilities. This is helpful for those sudden spikes in demand or scaling down when fewer resources are needed. Let's move on to storage. You can provision additional desktop storage for users, which will act like home directory or an additional storage for Windows. You can have desktop storage between 50 GB to 10,000 GB. Even if the desktop gets terminated, the storage stays intact and can be reattached to a new desktop. This ensures that personal data is independent of the desktop itself and can be moved between the compartments or regions. When configuring the network for your pool, you will define which virtual cloud network and subnet to use. Each pool can have its own unique access and egress policies depending on the VCN configurations. And if you prefer private access, OCI offers private endpoint access ensuring your service access remains secure using private IP addresses within your VCN. You can enable private endpoint access for enabling private access to services within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. A private endpoint is a private IP address within your VCN that you can use to access a given service within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. This service sets up the private endpoint in a subnet 
of your choice within the VCN. You can think of this private endpoint as just another VNIC. In your VCN, you can control access to it like you would for any other VNIC by using security tools. Next, let's touch on the device access policy. Here, you can control how users interact with their desktops. For example, you can enable or disable copy and paste operations between the local system and the virtual desktop. You can also decide if the desktop can access the local system's microphone and speakers. Plus, you can allow or restrict access to local drives, either as read-only or disabled together. Now, under desktop management policy, you have some powerful cost-saving options. For example, you can set the virtual desktop session to disconnect after a specific period of inactivity, let's say 15 minutes. You can also stop virtual desktops after they have been inactive for a certain time optimizing operational costs. For example, you can set the time period for disconnect as 15 minutes and the desktops will stop after the 15 minutes of disconnected state. This way, you can optimize operational costs of your virtual desktop pools. If you enable the action on disconnect feature, you won't be able to use the scheduling option. But if you want to schedule the pool, it allows you to define regular availability periods for your desktop pools, limiting 24 by 7 compute usage. For example, you can provide access to the desktops only from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The end user will only be able to access the desktops during those defined windows. Finally, you can add custom OCI tags to the pool to make the management more easier. As an admin, you can monitor the state of the desktop pools right in the OCI console, whether they're active, inactive, or terminating. You have full control to stop, start, or terminate pools as needed. Plus. You can drill into individual pool details and if necessary manage individual desktops within that pool and that's the overview of setting up oci secure desktops a flexible secure and powerful solution for managing the virtual desktop environments thanks for watching